This is a 2020 Porsche 718 Cayman GT4, and it's simply awesome. The 911 has the reputation of being the flagship Porsche, the ultimate Porsche sports car, but this is my favorite new Porsche, and it's not even close. And today, I'm going to review this car and explain why. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my new online car auction platform aimed at enthusiast cars from the modern era. Anything from the 1980s, 90s, 2000s, or now, we want to see on Cars and Bids. Right now, there is a great selection of cars if you're looking for something cool from that era. So check out Cars and Bids, carsandbids.com, by clicking the link in the description box below. First, a little overview. The Cayman and Boxster are Porsche's entry-level sports cars. They start around $60,000 for 300 horsepower. Or, if you want more, you can upgrade to the S versions, which have 350 horsepower, for a starting price of around $70,000. But, if you want a real thrill, you'll have to go for the top of the range. In the Boxster, that means the Boxster Spider. But in the Cayman, it's it's this, the new Cayman GT4. The original Cayman GT4 came out back for the 2016 model year. I reviewed it a few years ago, and I absolutely loved it. But that version had 385 horsepower. This one has 414, thanks to a naturally aspirated 4-liter flat six. Porsche says it'll do zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds, and it has more downforce than the outgoing model, meaning it's faster around a racetrack. No surprise. Of course, it's also really expensive. This Cayman GT4 starts around $101,000 with shipping, and that's before options. And since this is Porsche, there are a lot of options. The sticker price on this particular car is just under $120,000. Now, that's well into 911 territory, but to me, this car is better than any 911. Yes, better than a 911. I know that will upset some Porsche freaks who just have to have the newest GT3 with the coolest deviated stitching that's better than their friend's GT3, which is the old version that nobody can actually distinguish except for 27 guys at a Porsche meet. But if they're honest with themselves, this is a more enjoyable car. It is the perfect size. It's the perfect horsepower, the perfect speed, the perfect performance without having some grotesque rear wing or way too much power to actually use anywhere. This is the car, and today I'm going to review it. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of this GT4, and I'm going to show you all of its interesting quirks and features. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features on the outside of the GT4 and discuss some of the styling touches that distinguish this from a regular Cayman. It's not really all that much, especially compared to some other new Porsche models like the GT3 RSs that have these giant wings and scoops and vents and really go out of their way to make sure you know you're looking at something different. In the GT4, one of the big distinguishing features is up front. You can see the bumper is far more aggressive than what you get on a normal Cayman. As you might expect, it's lower with larger intakes so air can get in, and it just looks more aggressive and bolder. Same deal with these vents on the side of the car. You can see they're larger than what you get in a standard Cayman, and of course they say GT4 on them to distinguish them just a little bit more. But by far the biggest difference between the GT4 and a standard Cayman on the outside is the wing. This giant rear wing back here. Not quite GT3 RS level, not even close, but still big for a car like this, and it does help this stand out from the traditional Caymans. Of course, it also provides extra downforce for serious track use. Now, speaking of upgrades on the outside of this car, I mentioned earlier that the GT4 has a starting price 
price of around $101,000, but this one has a sticker price of just under $120,000. One big reason for that increase is the brakes. This car has the optional Porsche carbon ceramic brakes, which are an eight thousand dollar extra so they really add to the price carbon ceramic brakes dissipate heat better than standard steel brakes which is better for people who want to seriously use the car on the track so the brakes cost eight thousand dollars extra the other really big option on this car is these seats these tight sport bucket seats are six thousand dollars extra if you want to make the car seem racier and sportier to match the whole gt thing so the base price 101,000. And this car's sticker is around 119, but those two options make up about $14,000 of that price increase. As for the seats themselves, they certainly do look sporty, but that also means they're pretty tight, especially on the bottom. They work for most body types, but they really grip you in place and they make getting in and out of the car a little harder. Frankly, it's hard to imagine paying six grand extra for these tighter, less comfortable seats, especially because they're not even powered. These are manually adjustable seats that you have to pay way more money for. And yet these seats are highly desired in the used market, I guess, because this is what people want in their racy, sporty Cayman, these racy, sporty seats as well. If you want to maximize comfort, ditch them. Then again, you probably wouldn't want a GT4 in the first place. Now, speaking of the sporty seats, may I turn your attention to the center console, which I love because virtually every button is performance related. No automated parallel parking button here, no ventilated seat button. Instead, you just have sports stuff. One button is marked auto blip. If you turn that on, it will automatically blip the throttle as you downshift, just like a sports car should. Below that, you have a little suspension control button. You push that and sport suspension goes on, which makes the car ride even rougher than regular. I'll get to that when I drive it. Below that, you have two buttons that can turn off various electronic driver aids. The top one, ESC off, turns off stability control. The lower one, ESC plus TC, also turns off traction control in case you think you know better than your car's electronic systems. Those could come in handy on the racetrack. And beyond that, another important button in the center console on the other side is your exhaust button. You press that and it turns on the sport exhaust, which sounds a lot better than the normal one. I'll listen to that in a few minutes. Next up, one thing I absolutely love in this center console, among all of these sporty related buttons, one thing you won't find in here is a sport button. There isn't one. All modern sporty cars have a sport button, but not this car. I guess Porsche's thinking is the whole car is a sport button. If you get a GT4, you're not exactly going to want to cruise around in comfort mode, so you might as well just always make the car in sport mode, and I love that. Now, one drawback to these buttons in the center console is you still have blanks. I always complain about blank buttons, and here they are again staring you in the face. In this case, it's relatively okay given this car's character. It's a sports car. Stuff has been removed to save weight. I especially don't like seeing blanks on luxury cars, but I wish you could just not see them at all. That would be nicer than looking at blanks for options that you couldn't afford or didn't get. And of course, the last thing in the center console worth mentioning, and probably the most obvious, is the gear lever. This car has a manual transmission. Even in this push to automatics with Porsche and their ultra-fast dual-clutch PDK, this thing still has an old school manual, although PDK will become an option for this car in a few months. But for now, you want one of these, you got to get a manual. This is the best way to get this car. And next up, I want to move on to something that I find absolutely hilarious in here, which is the bizarre combination of ultra lightweight track focused weight savings but also modern comfort and convenience features. For instance, on the door panel, there is a fabric loop you pull to open the door. The door handle has been eliminated. It is too heavy. Instead, you get this fabric loop, which I'm sure saved three pounds. Now, the especially funny thing here is this ultra weight saving fabric loop door handle is placed right next to the controls for your power windows and your power mirrors. If you really wanted to save weight, you'd go to crank windows and manual mirrors along with that fabric loop, but you don't really want to save weight. You just want to look like you're saving weight, hence the loop next to the electronic stuff. 
And this bizarre sort of show of weight savings continues all throughout the car. For instance, you have a full infotainment screen with all the usual functions, navigation, and it's a touchscreen, but you don't have lights on your visor mirrors. You just have the mirrors. They've removed the lights to save weight, <laughs> but they gave you a full screen with a navigation map that can guide you across town, tell you what the weather is, and let you know what route to take for the best traffic conditions. Seems questionable. And another great example of this, these seats, these $6,000 ultra tight sport seats for maximum track usability. And then you have a full dual zone automatic climate control system. So you can perfectly set the temperature to whatever you want and the car will automatically blow air until your desired setting is reached. So your butt sits here in this tight, minimally padded seat, a sacrifice for the ultimate performance on the track. <laughs> but at least you'll be a nice, comfortable temperature. And another example, this car with all of its track focus still has cup holders. They're over on the passenger side above the glove box, these famous Porsche cup holders that everyone hates but me. I love that you can pull out the cup holder and then put the trim back in place so it doesn't all show the inner mechanism. I think this is brilliant, but most people seem to think these cup holders are flimsy or poorly positioned. Either way, this track car has them so you can have your drink with you on the racetrack. Really, this is a big reason why I love getting into these Porsche GT cars. I always find it funny what Porsche feels like they can remove and still make people think they're sporty versus going too far and just annoying people. Crank windows would annoy people, but a fabric loop door handle, well, that's just cool weight savings. And Porsche seems to have mastered precisely the line between sporty weight savings you can charge more for and just downright annoying people. But anyway, moving on to some other interesting quirks in here. One is the gauge cluster. You have two traditional analog gauges, the tack in the middle, and the speedometer on the left. Over on the right, you have a gauge screen, and you can scroll through various different screens here that show all sorts of data, your trip information, tire pressures, the music. You can also get to the navigation map, which shows a Google satellite image of where you are. Personally, I think that looks really, really cool next to the other gauges. It's sort of like new meets old, and it could be helpful. And next up, another interesting quirk. In the glove box, we have the owner's manual inside this pouch, although it's not just the owner's manual. In fact, it is called the good to know owner's manual. <laughs> find that to be kind of interesting. We all get what an owner's manual is. You don't have to tell us it contains things that are good to know. But I actually find a different item in the owner's manual pouch to be even more amusing, and that would be the maintenance supplement, specifically the cover with this guy cleaning his Porsche and like worshiping the Porsche badge. This photograph perfectly sums up most of the Porsche enthusiasts I know, obsessed with keeping their Porsche clean, worshiping the Porsche crest, dreaming about deviated stitching that guy's probably about to run inside and post on red list that he had some great idea for deviated air vent slat colors. Finally, the last interesting item worth discussing in here is the infotainment system, which is of course the screen in the center. I have to say it's pretty good, nothing particularly unusual or special in here. It's just fine, very intuitive, responds very quickly to your touch. It's a good and easy system to use. With that said, it feels a little outdated compared to newer Porsche models, and especially compared to Tesla or Mercedes-Benz with much better systems and larger screens. This screen, for instance, can't display two things at once. So if you have the navigation system going, but you want to change the radio station, you have to leave the map behind, go to the radio tab, change it, then go back to the map, or scroll through various different menu items in your gauge cluster to get them both showing two things. A lot of modern screens can show two or even three different things at once, so you don't have to do that. But generally, I would say this is a good system, especially in a sports car where that's not going to be the focus or the reason that you buy the car. And next up, we move on to the outside of the GT4, where there are a few interesting items worth mentioning. One is these brake lights. I really like the clear look of them, very distinctive, very modern. I especially like the turn signal, though, which is this bar right in the middle, kind of bisecting the brake lights. It's a nice look for this car. Now, speaking of the brake lights, another interesting item back here are these little red things in the bumper. At first glance, they look like reflectors, but they do more than that. This is also the location of the rear fog light. Turn on the rear fog light, you can see it lights up down here. You turn on this light in heavy fog so drivers coming up behind you know you're there. So this little piece in the bumper is part reflector, 
part fog light. And speaking of rear lighting, another interesting quirk, all of the newer Porsche models are migrating to a full light bar across the back, but it's been a few years since the Cayman was redesigned. They're not ready to do that yet, so it has kind of a fake light bar across the back. This little black piece that joins the two brake lights I think is intended to look like a light bar and get the design in keeping with the other Porsche models, but it's not a light bar at all. It doesn't light up. It just sort of looks like one. And next up, I want to talk engine around back since this is a mid-engine car. Now, base model versions of the latest Boxster and Cayman use a turbocharged four-cylinder instead of flat six engines like they have in the past. And this has generated a lot of controversy and a lot of negativity. A lot of people think it negatively affects the character and the driving experience of the car. As a result, for the performance versions, the Cayman GTS and the GT4, Porsche went in the opposite direction and quite far. This car has a flat flat six, not just that, it's a four liter flat six, quite a large engine, and it's naturally aspirated. No turbocharging here like basically every other modern sports car. So you get a GT4, you get a four liter flat six, naturally aspirated, 414 horsepower, 309 pound-feet of torque, and like I said, zero to 60 in about 4.2 seconds. I'm not sure how long Porsche can continue to get away with making engines like this, large, naturally aspirated flat sixes and the world of fuel economy regulations and turbocharging, but it's good while it lasts. And it sounds pretty good. Take a listen to this engine in sport exhaust mode. <laughs> Finally, let's talk practicality and specifically storage, which is something I have always liked about the Cayman because there are two rather large storage areas. Press this little button on the key fob, pop open the rear hatch, and you can see the rear cargo area, which is large and long, not especially deep, but big enough that you can easily stick stuff in here and frankly, a lot of stuff. And you even have these little cubbies behind the seats over to the side. Porsche said, hey, we got some extra room why not give people more storage? So that's on either side in the back here in case you have a smaller item, you don't want it to roll around with the rest of your cargo while you're driving, you can stick it in one of your rear cubbies. But like I mentioned, this car has two rather large storage areas. I just showed you the rear one, but you also have one up here. Press a different button on the key fob. You can pop open the front to here and then open it right up and you have another rather large storage compartment, which really does enhance the practicality of this car. You have two places where you can put bags, luggage, whatever for a trip, which makes this a nice weekend getaway car with your sport bucket seats. And so those are the quirks and features of the new Porsche 718 Cayman GT4. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the Cayman GT4. And there has never been a car that I was so excited to go and drive throughout the filming of the video. I'm just like, let's get this over with so I can go drive. And people say, well, the XJ220, the F40, those cars all make me nervous. This car is just fun. I'm gonna make a big one here. I really believe this is one of the greatest sports cars I have ever driven in my entire life. It is an unreal car. It is so much fun to throw around. It feels so quick. It is so exciting. I am absolutely in love. And it's the perfect size. It's such a tight, little, fun, go-around corners car. I am one of those people who's of the opinion that the 911 has gotten a little too big to really be what it once was. This is the car. And if it wasn't for guys like me who gotta have four GTs because they're cool, if they would just get over the gotta have the cool, fast, expensive thing that everybody looks at, this would be the car. It doesn't get any attention. Every time you pull up at a meet or an event, oh, it's not a 911, oh, it's a GT4, that's pretty cool. But when you're on the road and when you're pushing it and when you're on a curvy road, there is nothing 
that drives quite like this car, and in my opinion, it is one of the great sports car experiences I have ever had driving this car around. So let's talk about what makes it so great. I already mentioned the size, it's tight, it's little, perfect to toss around, and I really love that. Uh, another good one is the power. Yeah, the car is powerful and it feels really fast, but it's not aggressively overpowered. You know, you drive an F8, you floor it, and you're way over the speed limit in two seconds. This thing, you gotta work the gears. You, if you wanna pass somebody, you gotta go down the gear, hear that auto blip, feel that amazing clutch and shifter. And by the way, that's another thing that makes this car so great. Not only is it a manual, but this is one of the best manuals in the world, one of the best clutches, one of the best gear levers. It is truly a fantastic, a joy to shift these gears. Then there's the steering and handling. Unbelievable sharp, just incredibly poised, incredibly well balanced, amazing. It just feels perfect. The car feels like an extension of you, a go-kart to quote cliches, but in this case those cliches are actually true. It is unbelievable how quickly the car changes directions and how quickly you feel like you're one with the car. Now I want to say here, I'm not one of these Porsche obsessed freaks who freaks out over the deviated stitching and the GT3 Touring or the GT3 Regular, the GT3 RS or the RS 4.0 or the whatever. I don't care. There's so many versions, there's so much obsessive speculation and renless posting. It's not my thing. But I love a car that drives well, and this is a car that drives well, and maybe better than just about any other car that I've ever driven. I truly believe this is one of the great sports cars ever. I mean that. And so that's the 2020 Porsche 718 Cayman GT4. I love this car. Love, 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 love. And I know some people just have to have a 911 because that's the top of the line model, the flagship Porsche. But if people were really honest with themselves and didn't care what their neighbors or their friends think, they would agree this is the best driver's car. This is the Porsche to have. And I would buy this over any 911, and I sincerely mean that. And now it's time to give the new GT4 a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, this car looks nice, but with the huge wing and giant front end, it's more purposeful than beautiful, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Handling is wonderful, magical, just a little light in front, and it gets a 9 out of 10. Fun factor is amazing. The car is just so excitingly, thrillingly wonderful to drive. This is a huge decision, but I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. Cool factor is lower. To most people, it's just a Cayman, even though it's the came in and it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 38 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. This car is reasonably well equipped but there's no big standout and it gets a 6 out of 10. Comfort is below average. It's pretty rough riding especially with these seats and it gets a 4 out of 10. Quality is excellent. It's got a fantastic interior and Porsche enjoys a good reputation and it gets a 9 out of 10. Practicality with only 2 seats it gets the usual 2 out of 10. Finally value and I think this is a great one. This is a fantastic fun car for half the money of many supercars that frankly aren't even as enjoyable. These also don't lose value like many other new cars, and it gets a 7 out of 10 for a total daily score of 28 out of 50. Add it up, and the Doug score is 66 out of 100, which places it here against some other new Porsches and modern sports cars. The GT4 edges out the BMW M2 competition. The GT4 wins in the weekend categories, which makes sense. The GT4 also beats out the new 911 in the weekend categories, which is huge. Where the GT4 lags is behind the new C8 Corvette. The C8 is nowhere near as precise or as fun, but it's faster, and right now it's way cooler. But to me, the relative subtlety of the GT4 is kind of a selling point. To most people, it's just a Cayman. To me, it's some of the most fun you can have in a new car today.